welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, the only show on Indian television where you, the MSME, get sent to stage to voice your opinions and thoughts. This is ETNAS special daily initiative to give MSMEs and entrepreneurs the opportunity to be front and center on every industry and area that matters to you tonight on the show on Influencer. We'll feature Bhuvaneshwar-based Mekam and later on the show on Leader Focus, a conversation around the retail industry. Do stay tuned. Starting off as an aromatic chemical unit, Bhuvaneshwar-based Mekam has now diversified into pipes and tanks for diversified industries. With a state-of-art bulk manufacturing facility now, my colleague Pooja Jain caught up with J.K. Rath. He's the director at the company to talk about IP for the manufacturing industry as well as the growth plans, amongst other things. Take a listen. McKen is a 35-year-old company founded by first-time entrepreneurs. How does a small-scale manufacturer in Bhuvneshwar manage to earn a reputation for building world-class boats? Uh, well, we are a group of technocrats who started uh, getting into entrepreneurship and decided to choose an item like fiberglass initially, which is a new item where the concept has to be sold to people. And we tried with that, with this good designs, good material, lot of sanitary items, lot of uh, few other items which we started. But later on, we had to stabilize at the requirement of the state. We found that the coastline of Orissa is so big and Chilika Lake being here, the market is so good for boats. We went into boats, we designed boats, we have consultant, we took consultants to design some good boats. We are into the market and we diversified from fiber, from fisheries uh, requirement to the tourism requirement to transport departments. So all sorts of boats now we make and we have created the brand McCain uh, with boat building in this reason itself, it's not only Orissa, we also cater to all other uh, states, right from uh, West Bengal to Cochin. Well, given the scope of the product portfolio here, there seems to be a huge potential for intellectual property rights and protecting what you've designed. Yet, research indicates that 80% of intellectual property rights filed in this country are done so by MNCs. What approach have you adopted in this context? Uh, you see, earlier, uh, this IPR, uh, although it is there, we know about it, but getting people to patent it were very few. For Orissa, we had to depend on Calcutta. We, 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 we had to depend on the advocates in Calcutta, the department, everything was there. But now, the, there is a change. Government of India has taken a lot many steps into it. There are many... Uh, government of India organizations which have come up and there are a few who have already started making this IPR uh, work in Orissa itself. This has made very easy. And when you talk of Mekem, Mekem has already uh, made uh, the, the trademark we have. There, there are a few patents which we have already made. So we have taken advantage of the situation now. Earlier it was difficult, now it is little easier and we are planning to adopt for various items, for the same, at the same time, for the new concept which uh, we, we, we are developing. Uh, there are a few items which I have developed in, uh, the, with the R&D. We are going to be patent the item uh, with that. Mm -hmm. You referenced government support a bit earlier. How have you as a company benefited from the Make in India movement, if at all? And very curious to understand what those benefits are at a ground reality level. Uh, well, Make in India is, is something uh, which was there. I mean, we, we, even we are one of the uh, product out of it. We pro produce in India. We make everything in India. But uh, within the last few years, you find various items comes into India. So this slogan itself is a big boost. And with this boost, uh, earlier whatever was the difficulties which we were facing, is being ratified by Government of India. It is made easy. With example, I can tell you, anyone who gets into uh, entrepreneurship has to go with certain barriers. He has to apply, he has to get a license, he has to do lot many inspections for his uh, own work setup. Government of India has made lot of changes. Now it is little bit easy. The steps are easier. 
Well, how challenging is it to recruit and retain talent in such a specific sub-segment of the manufacturing space? Uh, see, the talents, uh, you talk of uh, the skills which are available now, uh, they are also classified. There are certain items which you make and the skills are not available in the market, which we have to train them. Particularly when McCain gets into business like boat building, McCain has gone into hinge making. These are very typical uh, uh, skills and we, we have to develop. We pick up uh, talents from ITIs and all. Now coming to retaining, retaining uh, in India now it's very difficult because uh, the industries are growing up, the many industries they need talents, they try to pick up, uh, so you have to motivate your own people and the motivational classes has to be regular. Without that it's very difficult to retain and there are a lot many management uh, uh, skills which we, we have to uh, develop to keep those talents with us. And we are trying, we are doing it. it my, my, this company of McCain works as a family. So we, we try to motivate our workers as member of the family and try to retain. How do you foster an environment that encourages entrepreneurship, that encourages innovation in this space? Particularly if, you, if I talk of Odisha itself, hardly any industries are there. Talk of the small scale industries. We do uh, try to develop uh, talents here, the entrepreneurs here. And a group of uh, us, we have taken an attempt now to go to various engineering colleges, even the diploma colleges also, and motivate those students. And we try to, we try to give them ideas. And uh, the depth of uh, um, availability of uh, technology to be uh, implemented in the state is plenty. But the only problem is the entrepreneurial uh, interest has to come up. That interest is something which has to be created. So you have to give examples, you have to help those people. Even the incubation centers are not many. But we try to develop those industries or we give a facility of incubation part of it in our whatever available equipments we have to those people to develop. Now when it comes to the manufacturing of industrial products, there are many challenges in that these products need to be customizable as necessary, durable, maneuverable, and they also need to be safe. So what sort of R&D effort have you implemented in-house to ensure that? Uh, when, you, when you look to McCain, McCain has got experience in this line for the last 30, 35 years. And as we make it, a lot many problems which we have already faced. So our R&D is, is ratifying the problems in every step. And ultimately, we look to make a product which has to be very safe and there should not be any complaint any time. It has to be very uh, uh, useful uh, uh, to any sort of uh, uh, person who handles the uh, equipment or you talk of the product itself. Now, let me, let me tell you about the boats. The boats we manufacture, we always try to develop our boats as unsinkable boats. If a boat has a capacity of 30 people, we design it in such a way and we make it in such a way, even if it sinks, all 30 people and the boat will never sink. It has to float. Maybe with, with water, but it has to float. It can never get into the water. So designing is very important. Ultimate safety to your end users is very important, which you have to do. And the same thing you can do for the equipments, and the same thing, whatever you make. I, I'll also give you a small uh, example of, uh, we make sitting systems. A lot many sitting systems we do. And every chair, which has to be so good that uh, the safety of a person who sits should be 100%. What can the government do to increase the scope of small scale manufacturing in this state? What legislation would you like to see implemented ultimately? Uh, well, every government tries to improve uh, the system of I mean, getting, ha having more and more small-scale industries that try. Uh, unfortunately, I should say, uh, the state of Orissa has got all large industries. And these large industries, which uh, cannot generate more of small industries, I'm talking of the auxiliary industries, I'm talking of the ancillary industries. If you talk of the automobile, unit. The, the manufacturers hardly any uh, work they do. 
but the entire components are made by small scale industries, which we don't have in the state. You talk of any domestic items like uh, refrigerators, talk of uh, cycles, talk of scooters, we don't have many of them or as we don't have anything of them. So that is the lacuna the state is having. But we, I mean, one has to try to get such a, such a thing because I'll, I'll give, a, give an example of any automobile industry if it comes up. Along with it, minimum of 3,000 small scale industries will be generated at any place. And uh, that hasn't yet come. Well, you've recently introduced a new line of water scooters in India. So what's next in the pipeline for McCann? We feel the pleaser industry is going to be four to five times within the next 10 years. Uh, we have seen boats, we have uh, the boats, whatever we make, uh, will definitely, the new design which we are coming up, uh, will have a much better speed and pleaser uh, and comfort and finish and all. So we look forward to the tourism part of it which will have excellent boats. And once you have excellent boats in the market, we know that the tourist will, uh, inflow will also increase in the country. That is one. Second part is, uh, the, uh, we, are, we are into uh, waste management systems, which we design and we also implement. Uh, in a very near future, Mechem is coming out with the compost making equipment out of kitchen waste and all other biodegradable wastes. We have already developed the biogas. You can cook from the kitchen waste, whatever gases can come out. These are in, the, in, in, in our next uh, uh, product, which we have, we have lined up to uh, get it manufactured here. Time for a break. When we come back, a conversation around the retail industry on our Leader Focus segment tonight. Just stay tuned. Welcome back with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight on Leader Focus, a segment on the retail industry. I caught up earlier with the head of Lee Cooper in India as well as two entrepreneurs to talk about how the domestic retail market is changing in India, the role that online retail plays and what entrepreneurs need to keep in mind to make a mark. Take a look. Thank you all very much for being with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow to talk about what's happening in the retail space, the role that technology plays, the role that both online as well as offline retail play. Uh, but as always, let me very quickly ask both the entrepreneurs on our uh, interview to really talk about what it is you do. My startup is in high-end fashion rentals. We rent mainly for, we rent high-end designer wear mainly for festivals and weddings. Uh, we do men's as well as women's wear. We do accessories for both of them as well and we ship Pan-India. Okay. I am one of the founders of Flyrobe, which is the country's largest fashion rental service. Um, uh, we are also primarily into occasion wear. We are present across 12 cities in India. Uh, and we also have, given you were talking about offline space, we also have five stores across the country. Uh, okay, we will talk about uh, Omnichannel in depth, but I do understand the two of you have questions for our expert today. Um, so one of the first questions sir, that I had about for you, was mainly a lot of people who want to start their own company as a startup, they are bootstrapped. Um, when you have a limited amount of money or a limited number of resources, in what space should you put your most resources? Is it a particular department, is it a field, whether it's marketing or particular hiring particular people? So uh, there's no one fixed answer to this bit, but typically anything that can add value to the consumer is the space in which uh, I think investments needs to be done first. Uh, which brings in, you know, one is the consumer space, second is the product and without that the balance is never going to happen. Because uh, otherwise your last mile goes for a toss or the product goes for a toss, everything goes for a toss, I guess. So that's a balance one needs to strike. Okay. Um, I wanted to understand from Hithil his perspective uh, and uh, strategy around tier 2 and tier 3 cities in India versus uh, uh, the metro, metro and towns of India. Um, which is probably a high growth area for a large retail brand like Feature Group. 
from a, like a three to five years perspective. Every tier is interesting. Honestly, we have seen rocking numbers happen in tier two, tier three, and uh, metros are saturated. Yes, but then metros are living up to their expectation if you do the right things. So I guess India is still a market which is wide open. It depends on uh, where you want to press the lever and pedal and you know just roll on because I guess there's lots of business potential in each segment. So it's it's largely about your prioritization as to where you want to start first, make up uh, a model around it, and then start rolling it across. I guess before diluting it maybe too much. Since we were talking about omni channels earlier, we have our own physical store in Mumbai as well. Now that we've recently started doing Pan India. Uh, do you think it's better in India to be an online or a e-commerce business versus physical stores? Which one do you think always will do better? Uh, here I'm going to look at uh, the way we do business. For us, uh, we have always believed in taking the last mile to the customer. And uh, we see an impatient India. So my personal view is I see an impatient India. And the Indian customer today wants to have the tactile feel still. Globally also, uh, e-commerce as such is a uh, tool to reach the customer, but it's not a replacement of any other channel. It's just that it brings in good virtues of accessibility and others. Uh, however, uh, let's say if you look at the fact, what is today's customer like? Today's customer is impatient. Today's customer is knowledgeable. However, with all of that, the today's customer is demanding, and hence they want instant gratification. So if you want to see a product, buy a product, then itself, Versus you go and book a product, it comes four days later, six days later, and there's a question mark in your mind that whether it's going to fit you well or it's, it feels well or the color changes from what you see, there are variables added to it. So omni-channel uh, is an enabler. Yeah? So if you can use all your existing distribution uh, as a point of distribution further on also, then there's a unique model available. So that's, that's a balance one is going to strike. Hethal, in fact, maybe uh, I can ask you to talk to our viewers about what your own strategy is when it comes to online retail. Our own strategy, I, I, I would not limit uh, one, there's use of technology which is paramount, but then the use of technology is not about only online in terms of e-commerce as a thing. I think technology at the back is playing tremendous role. So in terms of forecasting, in terms of uh, business intelligence tools, multiple things which are happening on the back end, which is able to give you visibility on the consumer's demand. Is there a potent consumer demand which has not been uh, serviced? What's happening on that front? On the aspect of omni-channel, nothing more to say than maybe many experts on this show would have said. I'm not a tech Greek or a tech expert. But uh, definitely uh, using of tech to ensure that we are able to reach the customer uh, uh, with ease, with their comfort in mind. So buy online, uh, uh, you know, exchange offline, order online, get a delivery offline. A combination of all those models is one of the priority. Uh, so that's something that we have already worked and initiated work on in terms of at least started work on in terms of consumer facing end. And work will continue on that front. Okay, uh, Pranav was talking about malls and high streets and I just want to pick up on that and talk about whether tier 3 and tier 4 brands are able to reach the kind of customers they want through having stores in stores or malls. Are malls now changing the way India shops? What should entrepreneurs know about you know, how the retail landscape is then changing? Uh, retail landscape is definitely evolving. Is it evolving fast enough? Uh, maybe I would love that it evolves a little more faster. To add to it, it's not about a mall or a high street, but it's also about what businesses are doing. So is it, do you have an innovative product to offer? Do you have an innovative service, you need innovative experience to offer? So if those are there, then customers will go to a high street, go to a mall or go to, for that matter, a hill station for that matter. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's customer goes where there's something differentiated to op offer. And I guess it's about arriving at those offers. Uh, you were talking about the use of technology at the back end. I want to ask both. Uh, both of you, whether you use technology when it comes to, say, for instance, uh, warehousing, when it comes to logistics, when it comes to dealing with you know, your customers, dealing with uh, possibly your suppliers and your vendors, how much of technology are you using? What has been the biggest pain point? And therefore, based on that experience, maybe talk to our viewers about how they should, how you are overcoming that. I think, uh, yes, we're primarily a technology company. We think of us uh, as that way. Uh, so we use technology in all the aspects that you said. There are multiple dashboards uh, that analyze the uh, trends of the merchandise because it's very key to know that uh, because what is turning fast probably stock more of that and stock less of the you know low turning 
uh, apparel etc uh, of course uh, technology is a very key component in the omni channel space uh, where the stores are very closely integrated with the online space and there is a central inventory and that really adds to the benefit because if the person is going into the store and he's seeing probably 200 outfits there but uh, if he's not able to convert on those 200 outfits there is a larger catalog of let's say 5000 or 10000 outfits online which the assistant at the store can help him or her convert sure we're originally a technology company and we just happen to have a retail focus um, so we are always going to work on integrating more and more technology within our company on all levels. Currently we have it integrated in our back end, the way we, we have a store as well, as well as an online space. So it has to be a central system in terms of inventory. Uh, plus since we ship Pan India, we ship to all PIN codes. It's really important for us to be able to integrate technology in such a way where our shipments are taken taken care of. So for logistics, we have a massive integration in terms of technology. But even in our fabrics or in our clothing, we manufacture and rent under our own label. So we are constantly working on integrating technology within our own fashion line, so that when we are renting those pieces, they also do well for our consumers, as well as for the market in India, as well as give them something new at the same time. Both of you are saying something very interesting, that you all are primarily tech companies that are now in the retail space. Uh, and I want to ask the three of you this as you're winding down this conversation. One thing that you want to tell our viewers about how you create a brand and a name for yourself in this space because it's clearly very crowded. You have a lot of players. Uh, technology is clearly giving most entrepreneurs an edge over their peers. What should be the one or two things that they should do if they want to create a differentiator for themselves? And let me start. I think uh, one word for me describes it. The word is quality. For me, quality is multi-pronged approach. So there's quality in product, there's quality in people, there's quality in experience. So when you bring quality and consistency on that platform, I think then the way forward is just exciting. Uh, that's, that's all about it. Okay. Uh, the one thing that I want to tell people is that don't be afraid to break the rules. You can feel free to think out of the box. Yes, it feels like India might not be the market for it, but go ahead, try it out. You never know India will surprise you. So don't be afraid to disrupt the market. Okay, uh, I want to slightly tweak the question for you. What role then does the government have to play? Because say for instance, for the first time, e-commerce has come under the GST net. So things are clearly changing when it comes to the online retail space. How do entrepreneurs keep abreast of the changes that are happening? Um, what role is the government and the government regulation really playing in your space? And how are you able to grow then, keeping those changes in mind? I, I would ideally want the government to lay some more focused time on probably bringing in regulations for the industry because a lot of time what happens is that uh, the startup industry or the startup ecosystem or the tech ecosystem comes up with such new business models, for example, something like renting, there are probably lesser regulations around uh, in, the, in the taxation books and the regulatory guidelines. So people often are confused what is supposed to be followed, what is not supposed to be followed. For example, if a rental business is supposed to be charged a service tax or a VAT before coming of the GST, right? Because it's a service also, but we are lending a product for a definite amount of time, so it's VATable also in the VAT. So I think it is time now for to have some stringent rules and regulations around. So it just helps uh, release the ambiguity in the system. Heather, Jill, Pranay, thank you all very much thank for you. being with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. That wraps up tonight's episode of Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have any questions about any aspect of your business or you want to be featured here on the show, to remember our email ID where you can reach us is leadersoftomorrowtimesgroup.com. On Twitter, tweet at me personally at sunand underscore j or lot underscore et now is our official Twitter handle. Go to our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow and et now, or you can call us on that number you see on your screen. We love hearing from you. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good night.